I don't get a huge amount of critical feedback on this channel, but one of the things that comes up now and again is people will leave a comment along the lines of, but processed food is what's causing people to binge. Why aren't you telling people to cut out processed foods? You need to be telling people they should be eating whole foods. You need to be talking about fasting. You need to be telling people they need to cut out sugar. We know that this isn't good. We know that this isn't good. Why aren't you giving more advice to people about how they need to eat? Firstly, not only am I a psychotherapist, not a nutritionist, but also I tend to think that our mindset needs to change before our behavior can. I see people in this trap, this loop of just continually trying to change the way they eat and then not being able to do it and blaming themselves for that. The other day I came across this video on YouTube by Dr. K. He's got quite a big platform here called Healthy Gamer and he's a psychiatrist who talks a lot about how to change your life and how to move out of compulsive patterns. So it's quite broad and he talks a lot about behavior change. And when I watched this video, it really intrigued me. And so this video is actually inspired by that video. So I've taken his ideas and I've just shifted it slightly so that it applies to binge eating recovery. So I want to give credit where credit is due. And I also want to show you this clip, which is the premise of his video and this one. Doing stuff is not how people change. It's what it looks like after you change. Do y'all get that? The doing stuff comes after the change, not before the change. So here's the idea. Behaving differently is not how people change. People change and then they behave differently. If we change the way we think and feel, our choices will change. If someone is in chaos with food and binge eating, then yes, recovery is gonna look like those actual decisions, their behavior around food changing, but that will be the outcome of recovery. Now there are two components required for changing our mindset and one is new information and the other is challenging current thoughts and patterns. So new information could look like this channel. This is partly what I do, offering new ways of thinking about it, talking about it, ideas, what works, what doesn't work. New information could be being informed of the importance of eating regularly to help reduce binge urges. That would be new information that might lead someone to be able to go, okay, I think I could do that. I think I'm willing to try that and see. So the new information comes in first, the mind accepts it, if it does, and then they're able to do that behavior. Of course, it gets more complicated when we're getting into the nuances of day-to-day -day choices around food. What Dr. K is talking about in his videos is that change is basically learning. So the circuits in the brain that are responsible for change are the same circuits in the brain that are responsible for learning. And this is in the hippocampus where our long-term memory is stored. So he talks a lot about the science of behavior change and what it is we are trying to do in our brains to change the way we're thinking and feeling. And he offers three pieces of advice for how to do this. And I've just changed the order slightly because it just makes a bit more sense for me to present it in this way. And I'll explain why at the end. So the first thing, one of the worst things we can do for getting information into our long-term memory, and we need it there because you need to be able to retrieve it in a moment when you've got a binge urge or in a moment when you're stressed about a food decision or maybe you have just binged and you're struggling to get yourself back into balance. If this information is not in your long-term memory, it's gonna be hard to find it. And the old circuits, the usual patterns of thinking are gonna play out. So one of the worst things you can do for getting that information across into the part of the brain where we need it is to binge on content. Watching one video after another video after another video means you're, you're overloading your working memory. Our short-term memory can only hold so much information. And when we overload it, it's a little bit like when we overload our bodies with food, it then hampers our digestion. It makes it harder to digest the food because our digestion is overworked. In my mind, I'm likening the recovery process to learning a new language. So you wanted to learn French or Spanish or German or something. And this is adapted from a Dr. K example, but would it make more sense to spend five hours on a Saturday reading a textbook on that language or to spread the same amount of time over the week doing one of these apps where you learn a little bit and then you practice, you learn a bit and you practice because part of the learning process needs to be learning to recall the information. 
You might be like me, I was quite good at cramming for exams. I would cram for an exam, be able to pass the exam, but ask me three weeks later about any of that stuff and I couldn't recall it for you. And the second piece of advice that he offers, and this one I think, ugh, I um, almost want to present this one apologetically because I know how it would land with me if I was struggling. And it is one of the worst things that we can do when we are trying to change something is to be impatient because being impatient will always take us to that place of frustration because we won't see the results quick enough. We will become disheartened. We will feel despair and shame. I'm someone, I, I consider myself to be a naturally impatient person. It almost feels like a personality trait for me. And I, I work at managing my patients in life generally. And this is what it might take. It's trying to manage that impatience. And this feels, I don't want this to sound trite because I know that when you are suffering, it doesn't feel like you can afford to be patient. It goes back to that old saying is like more haste, less speed. If you try to rush this and get ahead of yourself, you'll end up going two steps forward and then five steps back. And it, it's not until we can see the futility of trying to do it quicker is the very thing that's making this process slower that it might feel possible to at least be mentally willing to go like, okay, let me try to practice patience here. And the last piece of advice he offers is reflect. How often have you watched a load of videos and maybe you've gone away feeling quite hopeful and gone, like, oh, all right, great, I'm feeling good, I feel like I've got this, but in a couple of days time, it feels like you don't got it and you can't even really remember what it was that you watched that time. The importance of reflection here cannot be understated because when we are trying to change, we are gonna hit internal conflict. And when we spend time reflecting, considering, digesting information and kind of taking in what we want and sort of putting aside what doesn't work for us, that is how we start to resolve some of that inner conflict or ambivalence that we often have to trying to do things differently. When you take content and you think about it, your brain has to get to work on it. It really helps with that processing, that getting that information in there. And because you've thought about it and it's gone through your own critical thinking, it will feel a lot truer than some piece of advice you heard, even if at the time you thought it was good advice. It also means that in a moment when you are trying to think differently and talk to yourself differently, that when you find it, that that will come from you. It's not someone else's voice, it's yours. And if we can have a voice in our head that says something different to what the critical stressed out voice normally says, that's when it's gonna feel possible to regulate ourselves and to be able to make different choices. And creating the new voice is like, like learning the new language. We need to practice a language before we're gonna to get to the point where we can think in that new language. Which again is where the patience comes in. So the whole shtick on Dr. K's video is this idea that you can change by taking no action. And it's not quite true because even reflecting is action. Even deciding to stop after one video is action. But it means that you are not trying to just behave differently not trying to just force yourself to eat differently. So the summary points are, we need new information. We need to challenge our regular belief and thought patterns. We need to be patient. We need to not binge watch content, which is not good for my channel, but I just, I would rather have people recover. And lastly, taking time to reflect to mull over. So that's like the practicing recall part because unless you practice thinking these things on your own, change is gonna be much slower coming, if at all. So I'm gonna suggest that you, you turn YouTube off now. I mean, you might wanna watch Dr. K's video. I will link to it here at the end of the video. I'll also link to it below because it reinforces these points and expresses it in a slightly different way, which might help with your own thinking. But after that video, switch it off. Take some time to reflect and digest. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video, but not right now.